Hello everyone, my name is Ruan and welcome back to week number eight in learning computer science in two years. Let's check out what happened in this week. Okay, if we go to the timesheet, you'll see something strange happen this week, right? Basically what happened was I just did my project. So I spent about one and a half hours on Monday uh, just watching the lecture for programming languages part B, uh, week number two. So I just watched the lecture and then I didn't even think about it for the rest of the week. And that means I'm probably going to have to rewatch that lecture when I <laughs> get around to starting the, the actual problem set, unfortunately. But that's that's fine. That's, uh, that's what's going to have to happen and I'm fine with that. What did happen was I spent a ton of time on my project, right? I actually spent in total 35 hours this week, which is quite a bit. Now, the reason that happened was because, like I said last week, I have a bit of a deadline that I put forward for myself and I wanted to launch this web application this week. And turns out, I actually did, right? I was very close to launch on like um, Friday and then Saturday I spent just, you know, ironing out some of the final bit of details that I needed to iron out in terms of the functionality of the application and some features. And then Sunday morning, I started bright and early just with deployment. And that's all I did the whole day. I sat and I fixed bugs and I tried figuring out how to deploy a website or web application in Flask. And I got like 50% yeah, there. I'll tell you what that means now. So since I spent this much time actually just doing my project, I thought, you know what? Let me show you what I came up with, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to go into VS Code. Now, I'm not going to show you the code, right? That's not what we're here for. Um, if I show anything that's sensitive here, we'll blur it because <laughs> this, this code is not good um, in terms of uh, you know, showing it online. That's for sure. But anyway, we are here and I'm in Flask. I'm just going to Flask run this um, and that will bring up this link and that will allow me to open the website right so here we have it here's the website so as you can see first of all let's be completely open and honest here i'm recording this video on the 15th of, of uh, september on a thursday and uh, i'm giving an update up to the 11th of <laughs> september so yeah that's kind of how it works right you finish a week um you want to record the video for the update you want to edit it get it out there as soon as possible i'm always like a week behind but that's just how it is, right? I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, but let me let me actually show you what this does. And um, first of all, why did I make this web application? So as you can see, it's called Jumping Rhino. Now, this is a company that family members of mine own. It's actually my parents. You know, they were just doing this old school. They were writing invoices by hand, doing everything very analog, let's say, you know, <laughs> on pen and paper. And it, it, it worked. But let's be honest, we know there's a better way of doing this. Um, it worked, but it wasn't efficient and it, it took a lot of time to get things going. And uh, it, it's always a, a nightmare with the paperwork and things go missing. So I said, you know what? First of all, it's a good idea to have a website. And it would be even better if your website actually helped you do bookings, right? So people don't have to phone you or send you messages or just rock up in person asking for a jumping castle. They can actually make a booking online. So let me take you through what this website can do, how it works. Okay, so first of all, we have a calendar. So this was my idea, right? You get to the website on the home screen, you have a calendar. It tells you what date or it asks for what date do you want to book a jumping castle, right? Okay, cool. So let's say, for instance, we are interested in those three days, right? The 22nd to the 24th. Uh, then you click on select castle. Now, to just to caveat this a bit, this is obviously generated by using, uh, it's using JavaScript, right? That's how you get a nice calendar that you can actually go through the different months, etc. And I did, I copied a lot of this from a tutorial on how to create a calendar. And then I had to edit it to actually make it a form, right? Because it was just a, a calendar and nothing more, which is fine. It's good if you can have a calendar, but I needed something that you can interact with. So I took some of the layout stuff, some of the CSS, some of the JavaScript, and I copied that. And then I had to write my own bit of code to get it 
so that you can actually select days, etc., and have it as a form that you can submit. So it's not all plagiarism. It's it's a bit of my own. It's a bit of somebody else's, but it's fine. This this is how I did it. Anyway, so you select a castle. What happens then is it actually it goes into a database. So I have a SQL database set up in the background, right? And it will go into the database and it'll say, okay, cool. We have these three days. Which jumping castles are actually available for this person to book? And it cannot have been booked a day before or a day after, right? Because you need some time between bookings to check if the castle has any damage or to clean it. For instance, if a castle was booked on the 22nd, it will not after the 21st. It will not show here because there wouldn't have been enough time between the 21st and the 22nd to actually go and uh, clean it, etc., get it ready for the next booking. So, and obviously if it's actually booked for those days, for any one of these three days, it will not come up on this list. So as you can see, there's quite a couple of jumping castles that we can select from. And uh, it gives you, uh, it gives you the basic castle number. So each castle has an ID. It gives you the price, the base of the castle's um size roughly and then the height uh, the height's only important for the high up castles <laughs> if you if you are concerned that your kids will uh, climb on top of it and fall off or something okay but anyway let's say we want three castles we have a big birthday party coming up right so we we selecting these three you can select any amount you want it all works right and we say continue to final step so this is where you now actually do the rest of your booking so my name is Ruan. And my last name is test for today. My mobile number is just going to be 10 digits because it needs to be 10 digits. Uh, test. Yeah, test at testmail.com. That seems like a legitimate uh, email address. One, two, three. Uh, test drive uh, road. <laughs> that's not a that's not an address, but let's let's suppose it is. So this is obviously just some things that you would need to fill in right for for your booking to be made okay so cool optional extras so deliver castle so that's if somebody wants it to be delivered obviously you don't always have a big enough car or a, a we call them buckies or whatever to actually load three jumping castles so it is possible that uh, they can be delivered so let's say we don't have a big car we want them delivered and we don't want to be bothered setting them up ourselves we want somebody to come and Put them on our lawn all nice and, and blow them up and we don't have to think about it, right? So we want both of those as uh, extras, right? It'll cost us, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, then we click complete booking. And uh, this takes a bit, but gets there. So as you can see, booking number 188 already. I've been booking a lot of castles uh, in the, the testing of this website. Okay, but there we go. Booking date for the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of September, 2022. Uh, booking number is that one. Okay, then it just gives it a little bit of a message. This stuff is not very pretty, right? I mean, let's be honest. It, it, we've seen better websites, but it's very functional. It just gives you an up, uh, just gives you a little bit of a printout what your order actually looks like. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Now, what happened in the background when I did that? is I have an admin email set up. So the website actually sent an email now to this admin account, right? So here we have, I called it the auto bot. <laughs> and th this is basically what it says, right? So it gives you these things. It tells you, okay, these are the dates in the, who's the person, what are the email, right? So if you can, you can now contact them before this booking is really confirmed. You can contact them and say, hi, we got this booking. Is it legitimate? Do you really want three castles? Are you sure it's going to cost a lot? Yes, 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 whatever. Then you book it. Or then you can actually confirm it. So the next step here is you would click this link, right? So this is just a link that it generates. And it basically says that, okay, and this is something that I want to have it do automatically in the future based on the address that was given. It will use Google Maps' API to actually calculate the distance for me. Uh, you don't have to fill it in, but for now we don't. I don't have that functionality yet. Let's say it's 20 kilometers away. We submit the distance, and uh, in submitting the distance, the website will now go in the background. It'll generate all the invoices and dispatch notes, right? So those are the two documents that it generates, 
and it actually told me now booking confirmed. Now, if for some reason, let's say there were a couple of bookings made and you know, I don't confirm them as they come, I confirm them later. So what could happen there is people can actually book the same castle, right? So if booking number five came in and they wanted a specific castle and uh, then booking six wanted the same and booking seven as well, and in the evening I maybe start confirming bookings, I start with five, then as soon as I go to six, it'll actually fail. So then I can let the customer know or let the client know because I have their contact details. Listen, sorry, but um, your castle has been already booked. Please go back onto our website and see if there's something else that you like, right? So it's not perfect, but unfortunately, uh, you do have to have some manual interaction there, I think, for now, uh, just to make that part work. But anyway, bookings confirmed. So now what actually happens from here? So... I'll just go over to my other screen again and I'll get you documents that it generates, right? So, okay, so here's the first document. It, in, it generates an invoice, right? So this is all calculated in the background. And uh, yeah, this was fun. <laughs> this was not fun. This was very difficult to get working right. To get your website to actually print a nice looking PDF document or create a nice looking PDF document, it's not fun in games, I can tell you that much. But anyway, here we go. Um, it tells you, well, there's each of the castles. You can see there's a deposit amount that will be refunded of 600 Rand. That's our currency. Then delivery and collection fee, 400. So it's for the 20 kilometers. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a calculation there. Taking, setting up and taking down service, 200 bucks per castle. And then the extra day rental because we this is for one day and we did three days in total. So this comes out to a whopping 4,900 Rand. Uh, I don't know why that translates to in, in something that maybe is more familiar to people like dollars. But anyway, for us South Africans, Rand, everybody understands that. Uh, you can go Google a conversion rate if you want to see if this is a, if this is a ripoff. Anyway, so that's the one document that it gets uh, for you. And then it gets a little dispatch note. And this is something just, it's, it's kind of a copy of the invoice you see on this side. A lot of the same stuff, but there's some extra things that we just want to have a checklist for. Like, did we get a copy of the driver's license or some identification of the person who actually came to pick up the castle? Are they paying cash or EFT? Every single one of these things, it's, it, this is just a physical document that we still need to keep. By the way, these, these were sent to not only the admin person, whoever that is, it'll also be sent to this email address, right? Because, okay, it's not an email address, so it wasn't sent anywhere, but that's the idea, that this will automatically be generated and sent to the person that wanted to hire the castles, right? So if we go back here, okay, there's nothing really more to do. There's a gallery and yeah, you can just come and browse <laughs> if you wanted. I mean, you kind of get to see this uh, when you go into your booking. It's not that fantastic yet, but it does have some critical functionality that I think really makes life a lot easier for my parents, specifically because they don't have to physically fill in all the people's details on an invoice and do the calculations with, you know, by hand or whatever. Things just kind of happen, right? Unfortunately, I was not able to launch this website online. So if you go to the Jumping Rhino domain, we'll actually not find a website, this website there. You'll find some placeholder website, which is not amazing. The idea is for this one to take that one's place eventually. However, we are still in the early phases. So currently I hosted it on a old laptop. I had an old laptop. I installed Linux Ubuntu server on it and I just ha have it set up at my parents' house um, and it's hosting the website on their local network, basically. So they type in whatever the laptop's IP address is, and they can actually get onto the website and use it like a website, right? But they just use the IP address instead of an actual www website. So that's for now. Um, it helps a lot because now obviously they can use it to make bookings. So, you know, somebody might phone and then they'll go, yeah, okay, let me go through this process. They'll click on the things um, while they're on the phone with the person or text messages or emails or whatever. It helps me because now we don't have a hundred people testing the website. I have one or maybe two people using it and uh, giving good feedback. So we've already um, discovered a bunch of bugs. <laughs> and I'm, I'm fixing them as we go. Uh, but it's good. It's better than having too many users 
from day one. So it's a it's a slow deployment. So after maybe two or three weeks, just my parents using it, I will maybe get a, a virtual private server and uh, host the website on there for anybody to use. But by then we'll be on like revision three or four or five or 10 of the website and there will be hopefully more functionality and it will be more stable, uh, able to handle, you know, a, a larger variety of people. Even just one person testing it that isn't you, the developer, already they come up with ways to break a website that is absolutely astonishing. Like, uh, yeah, it's still my fault that it breaks, but it, I couldn't break it for some reason, you know, <laughs> they break it. That's just how it goes. But anyway, what I did to actually deploy the website, you can call it G Unicorn or Gunicorn 3, as well as NGINX. So those are the two on the Ubuntu server that I use to deploy the website. Maybe I can, I can link to a video that explains exactly how that happened because I'm not gonna explain it here, but if you guys wanna are interested in seeing what I actually used to be able to do this, um, I'll link that below. I don't know, I'm kind of proud of my little project. I think it looks good, I think it works fairly well. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the background. We have a bunch of different, you know, functions. Uh, we have so many different things, you know, intertwining with the JavaScript, the SQL, the Flask, Ginger, Python in general, all these things, HTML, CSS. Yes, don't even get me started on HTML and CSS. My word. That is a different beast. Like I can figure out a function, uh, but then to have to try and <laughs> get anything to look like anything in HTML and CSS, absolute nightmare. And uh, I, I really realized that with this, this invoice layout, because this is generated in HTML and then made in PDF, but that was a nightmare. It took me forever, but now it's good. Now I know what I'm doing. Now I can do this very easily, but yeah, figuring it out the first time, not so great. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a bit different than what you might be used to. Uh, I didn't talk a lot about my studies because frankly, uh, there wasn't a lot of studying going on this week. It was just a lot of building a website. I still learned a lot, that's for sure. Don't underestimate the amount of learning you can do by building something. I can't even remember everything I've learned, but I do know I'm a better programmer today than I was a week ago. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.